At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the speaker for this occasion, Attorney Thomas N. Todd, attorney at law, known to us affectionately as TNT, is currently residing in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Todd was born in Demopolis, Alabama, and attended Central High School in Mobile. He entered Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in 1955 and received a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science. He attended Southern University's School of Law and graduated magna cum laude in 1963. Most recently, he received honorary doctorates from Grambling State University in 1987 and from Syracuse University in 1990 and from Wilberforce University in 1993. Mr. Todd has been admitted to many bars and courts, including the Supreme Court of Louisiana, the United States Court of Military Appeals, the Supreme Court of Illinois, and the United States Supreme Court. As the first full-time black law professor at Northwestern University School of Law, he taught from 1970 to 1974. Mr. Todd has held many other positions which reflect his involvement with the civil rights movement. He was president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference Chicago chapter in 1971, executive vice president, executive vice president of Operation Push, and he has served as acting president of Operation Push from 1983 to 1984. Mr. Todd has appeared on radio and television programs throughout the country and has been the subject of feature stories in major publications such as Jet Magazine, the Chicago Sun-Times, the Chicago Tribune, and he has written articles published in Dollars and Cents Magazine, the Southern University Law Review, and the School Board News. Mr. Todd has spoken for various organizations and institutions throughout the United States, as well as in Africa and Mexico, with much of the emphasis on civil rights and education. He has also conducted affirmative action seminars for various corporations. He is the recipient of over 200 awards and honors. Mr. Todd is married to the former Janice Roberts and has two children, Tamara, Tamara Nicole and Tracy Newborn. Please join me at this time in giving a rousing Suno welcome to our commencement speaker, Attorney Thomas N. Todd, TNT. Thank you so much. I shall be free, I must be free, I will be free. Only when the eyes have it can the we be free. That is what the poet meant when he wrote, I set my soul into the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell and by and by my soul returned to me and answered, I myself am heaven and hell. I am very pleased to join you at this very, very significant event. And to Dr. Jex, thank you so much for that warm introduction. Let's give the chancellor a round of applause and show him how much we appreciate him. And to this marvelous choir, thank you so much for that rendition. Give them a round of applause to show them how much we appreciate them. To the distinguished chair of this Southern University Board, to my good friend, I won't say old friend, President Dolores Spikes, the president of the system. To President, give her a round of applause too. Yes, we appreciate her. To Chancellor and Dr. Jex, and to this distinguished and outstanding faculty and staff, give them a round of applause too. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, 
One thing Dr. Jacks did not mention is that I am from L.A. That's lower Alabama. <laughs> and when I was a child in Alabama, Dr. Bastro, you know, we had a phrase called may like, may like. Don't may like you know what you're doing if you don't. Don't may like you know where you're going if you don't. Don't may like, don't may like. And so as I stand here this morning and see all of you and see all of these graduates, I cannot may like I'm not excited. This is an extraordinary morning. Let's give all of you a round of applause. When, when Sister Lydia Adams asked me to come here on behalf of Suno to share this day with you, I realized that on this morning, that this is one of the most significant events in our community, in our lives. Graduation is so special for us. It is such a joyous time. And I can tell that there are many of you graduates who are glad to leave Suno this morning. I also want you to know that there are many of you that glad that Suno is glad to see go. <laughs> But this is a great time. At no other time in our lives, at any time, when we have under the same roof several generations, when we have family members and religious representation and friends and relatives and educators and just plain ordinary folks coming together to honor these graduates, I say to you, 1994 Suno graduates, this is your day. This is a great day. This is your day. 1994 graduate of the Southern University. But I wish, as I stood here and sat here this morning and looked at this processional, as I watched you walk into this auditorium, as I looked at you, I saw many faces, but this morning all of the faces wear one mask, the mask of pride and joy. Behind the mask, I could not help but wonder, although I see pride and joy, I could not help but wonder what is behind the mask this morning, behind the mask of pride and joy. I see long hours and hard work and sacrifice, but today all I see is pride and joy. Behind, behind the mask, I see harsh words and misunderstandings, and I see arguments and anger, but today all I see is pride and joy. Behind the mask, I see bent backs and bruised egos, swallowed pride, pain and suffering, but all I see today is pride and joy. This is a great day. This is your day, graduates of the Southern University at New Orleans. But I wish that I could say to you, graduates, I wish that I could say to you that with all of this pomp and circumstance, I wish that I could say to you that with all of this marvelous ceremony that there will be something about this day that will automatically transform you into something different. I wish that I could say to you that automatically you'll have a brand new world and automatically you'll have a brand new shining hour. Oh, but graduates, I must say to you, there is no automatic entitlement syndrome in America. If you would have a bright new shining world, if you would have a bright new hour, you must work and work and work and work and work to make the new day real. And so graduates, I say to you that this is your beginning, not your end. It is your commencement, not your conclusion. It is your plateau, but not your summit. It is a prologue, but not your epilogue. It is your prelude, but not your finale. It is your fortissimo, but not your fortissimo. This is a great day. This is your day. Oh, but I say to you, I say to you that you've come to graduate in a day of great inconsistency. I must say over and over again, because when you come to a Suno or you go to Baton Rouge or you go to Gramlin, you must understand that these are truth givers. These are lifesavers. So we speak the truth. You come here today to graduate at a time when many of us believe that the most consistent thing in America is that America is consistently inconsistent. The most consistent thing in America is that America is consistently inconsistent. 
Here is a nation, Reverend, which preaches peace but practices war consistently inconsistent. Here is a nation which recruits white immigrants from Eastern Europe and from the Baltic states while sending black Haitians back to Haiti in their little boats, calling them economic refugees and not political refugees. As a matter of fact, for some of us in America, America is not a melting pot, it is a frying pan. Here is a nation only in America, only in America could a nation run an individual out of office as a crook when he lived, but when he died, honor him as a statesman and a hero, only in America, consistently inconsistent. Well, I tell you, for me, there isn't enough soap in the world to clean up Richard Nixon. For me, the only, listen to me, listen to me, and the views that I express today are the views of Thomas N. Todd and not necessarily those of the chancellor or the president of the system or of the chairman of the board. Now get that straight. The only reason that Richard Nixon didn't go to jail because he was a white man who stole the presidency and not a black man who stole a car. And so, listen to me. Oh, Southern, dear Southern, we owe our all to thee. In downfall of victory will always loyal be. Thy sons and daughters as they work will be inspired by thee. Young people and old people, all of you who are graduating, education has always made the difference. What we must understand is that with education it is difficult, without education it is almost impossible. And in education, and I don't apologize for this, I stand here and say it proudly, education has always made the difference. And for us, historical black colleges have always been the difference in education. And I don't mind saying that this morning. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two, young people, whether you're black or white or Hispanic or whatever you are, race in America still makes a difference. Now listen to me. Race still makes a difference. The greatest problem facing black people in America today, and I hope you hear this, graduates, whatever your race may be, I hope you hear me. The greatest problem facing blacks in America today, or African Americans, or Africans in America, whatever you call us, is racism. Racism in America is what wetness is to water. Take wetness from water, you don't have water. Take racism from America, you don't have America. You must have some other country. I know what you're saying. If it's not racism, then why are blacks two and a half times more likely to be turned down for mortgage money than their white counterparts? If it's not racism, then why are black men, women two and a half times more likely to lose their children the first year than their white counterpart? 62% of all race crimes in America last year was because of race. I know some of you are looking at me and saying, well, Tom Todd, you've been saying this for a long time. Yes, I have. Say, you ought to catch up with 94. Say, even Michael Jackson sings, it don't make no difference if you're black or white, but if you look at this dude, you know he ain't taking no chances just in case he's wrong. Just in case he's wrong. I don't know about his other problems. So what? So what is your challenge? Listen to me. What is the challenge which you must seek? Do not go into this world thinking that because one or two people have made it, that we've all made it. We cannot judge the quality of right life for an entire race of people by the illusion of progress for a few of its members. True progress must be measured by the quality of life for the masses. Second lesson, I got three or four lessons and I'll be gone. Second lesson, Third lesson, listen to me, hear me, you're playing in somebody else's game. They write the rules and they keep the score. If you're gonna play the game, you must learn the rules of the game. But once you learn the rules of the game, and once you play the game, and when it looks like you're gonna win the game, they change the rules. And then they change the game. That's what you must understand. 
Don't let anybody define you. Say, mine is no better than yours, but it's just as good. When I was in Alabama, I remember every time I saw a picture of a lion and the lion tamer, the lion tamer had his foot on the lion's head. Stay with me now. The picture of the lion tamer and the lion, the lion tamer had his foot on the lion's head. I said, this lion tamer must be mighty bad, always winning, always vanquishing the lion. And then I grew up, and what I realized was every picture I saw of the lion tamer and the lion, the picture was taken by the lion tamer, the lion hunter. If the lion had taken the picture, then the lion would have had his foot on the hunter's head. So graduates, I say to you, whatever you see, be careful about who takes the picture. Yeah. When you read about this speech, if you read about it tomorrow, be careful about who wrote the speech and who gave the speech and who took the picture. You must face this as graduates. You must look at these inconsistencies. You must be prepared to deal, especially as sociologists and social workers and social engineers, with these inconsistencies. Now, you know, while America was looking at Farrakhan Khan and Khalid Abdul Muhammad and writing about them and Jesse Jackson, they had a little white man in the CIA stealing all of America's secrets. Now, you know, if I had $500,000 to pay for a house cash, They'd take my money, but then they'd call the police. <laughs> so this Negro got $500,000. These are the inconsistencies. That's why we teach you here what the truth is. Suno is a truth giver, a lifesaver. Oh, Southern, dear Southern, thy praises we shall sing until all the heavens and echoes loudly ring. The winds of the sky as they pass us by will adoration bring. Why is Suno under attack all of the time? Why do they jump us on, on us all the time? Why is Southern University in Baton Rouge under attack all of the time? Why is Gramlin under attack all of the time? I'll tell you. I'll take this picture. This week in Baton Rouge, 512 people graduated from Southern. Most of them were black. This morning, you are 526. Most of you are black. <laughs> Gremlin has graduated a large number. If you put Southern's graduation of black students together with Suno's graduation of black students together with Gremlin's graduation of black students. You have almost 2,000 black graduates this week, more than LSU and Louisiana Tech and Northwestern, and all of them combined. So why do they attack us? They attack us because you represent the competitive pool. Eliminate Gremlin, eliminate Southern, and no blacks to speak of, we'll graduate. It's not that you're not doing a good job, you're doing too good a job. <laughs> Finally, you must give some back. Wherever you are, you didn't get here by yourself. You're standing on somebody else's shoulders. So there is no greater award in your life, a reward, than when you reach back and bring somebody else across or reach down and bring somebody else up, or reach out and bring somebody else in. Finally, as you leave, you're going to have some difficult times. People will break promises to you. People will break their word. Dreams will be broken to you. But just remember, thank you, just remember, I once heard a songwriter say, that God uses broken things, uses the broken soil to give us golden grain, uses the broken clouds to give us rain. God uses broken things. 
Why can't you say, Lord, if I've got to be broken, let me be broken for you. You got a way of taking broken things and making them just like new. Lord, I don't mind the pain. Just do all that you've got to do. Just take me and break me and make me just like you. Finally, finally, I want you to stop all this selfishness. All of this internets and fighting. No army is strong enough to win fighting the enemy within and the enemy without. Don't let this be Southern's last stanza. Oh, Southern, dear Southern, we weep and mourn for thee. For the forces working against us have gained the victory. Selfishness and stupidity blinded us. Now that it's too late, we can finally see. For me, graduates, I would rather own a rowboat than to lease somebody else's yacht. For me, I would rather own a room and a kitchen than to rent somebody else's mansion. For me, I would rather own just a little piece of my own than to borrow somebody else's home for me. And so I leave you this morning with the words of Billie Holiday. Hear her words. Billie Holiday sang, when you've got money, you've got lots of friends. They all hang around your door, but when the money is gone and all the good times end, they don't come around you anymore. Listen to me, rich relations may give a crust of bread and such. You can help yourselves, but you better not take too much. Your mama may have, your papa may have, help me, but God bless the child that's got his own, that's got his own, that's got his own. Congratulations and good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, I say to you now, you have some idea why we call him TNT. Thank you very much, Attorney Todd.